Hey everybody. Today, today I'm in a really good mood. I don't know why. No cats in here. That's kind of nice. They come in when they hear me doing uh, my videos, but uh, I think they're both asleep. By the way, I've got one pair of glasses on today. Wearing those two pairs of glasses constantly. I spend half my time editing out all the time, so I'm friggin' with my glasses. So I'm just going to wear my reading glasses, and out there it's just a little fuzzy, and who cares? It's not your problem. But I'm really tired of, um, with the glasses. All right, today what I want to talk to is I want to talk about the blaze. The blaze to me is really critical because, you know, someone said on one of the websites, they said, you know, these people that do these videos and they say they know exactly where it is. I mean, if you don't think you know where it is, you shouldn't be going out on the uh, hunt. You have to know where it is. But by the same token, I agree, it's, it's kind of ludicrous to sit around announcing to the world you have found it when um, you obviously haven't. Because then the video would be you probably just showing the chest to the world. There are people, some people in the community, that still do the titles that say WWWH Clue oh, Solved. You know, and then you go look in it, and it's just like, they just have an idea. So I try not to do those kind of things. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's like you never know exactly until you find it. But on the other hand, when you go out looking for this thing, you are going to be pretty sure of what you're looking for. And I've been out on my trips to Colorado, and of course, looking back, I think... Now, I've said this before, but I mean, I looking back, I was like, what are you doing in Colorado? But then when I, st I reviewed one of the videos the other day when I was in Vermilion Creek. Oh, man, it's such a beautiful solve. Dinosaur National Monument is a beautiful solve, and so is the, home, the summer home of Molly Brown. But they were all kind of, they did not, they did not say what Fenn said, which is, when you figure out the solve, you will know exactly where you're going. I mean, as if someone gave me a map from here to the local Walmart, I would see it all the way. And that's kind of the sense I'm getting from what I'm now doing as far as a solve, although I'm still stuck with that halfway mark. And, and I don't do this every day either. I don't study this every day. I don't read books every day about it, etc. So, um... But it still brings me to something I've been contemplating as I keep researching what I'm doing. And I go, you know, but it all is going to come down to the blaze. And a lot of us know that. Um, your boots on the ground. Some people say you have to be boots on the ground to see the blaze. Some people say you can see boots on the ground, they think, probably from the map. Um, people... Forrest then has said you cannot see the treasure from Google Earth. I don't think he's ever said you can't see the blaze from Google Earth. Could be wrong about that. Um, what Forrest Fenn says in 2014, that you can't see something with Google Earth, may no longer be true in 2018. It's another thing we have to keep in mind. You read quotes of Forrest Fenn about something technology related like Google Earth, that could be invalidated within a few years. Because the, every, all the technology keeps getting so much better, right? So, I mean, he could say, oh, you can't see this or that. I think it was about the treasure, though. He said it doesn't go down that far, meaning Google Earth, in the conversation. Bottom line is, though, let's say you figured out that this thing is on a particular river. And you think it's on a river side. And as people have said, creek, river, river, creek, um, stream... They are all kind of mixed up. I'm just going to go with the with the uh, idea of a of a creek, because of paddle up your creek. So let's imagine you have found a place that you think is on a particular creek, and um, your idea is you're going to actually go to that creek. And then you're going to find the blaze. 
boots on the ground because we know this chest is so small. It's the equivalent of putting two shoe boxes together, taping them together. 10 by 10 by 5 or 6 inches high is not a lot to look at when you're outside. My treasure, you know, the treasure sim, the ch treasure chest sims, uh, simulations I did through that. And people were impressed by that. They said, wow, that really is small. Yeah, it's really small. So it's going to have to be that blaze. That bl For people that know what I'm talking about, how small the chest really is, I think we all realize you're really going to have to be able, you're going to have to have a blaze that really gets your attention. <laughs> to show you, I mean, you're slogging along the creek, right? Maybe you're going up the side of a creek, and you think it's supposed to be on this creek, and maybe you figured out, I don't know what how much you would have figured out, but well, let's just say you think it's up the creek, and it's north of the mouth of the creek. So you're kind of, okay. All you can do is really realistically look for a blaze because if you're seriously looking around in the woods and in the undergrowth or beside trees or around rocks we all know that chest is going to be damn it's going to take you a hell of a long time to figure out where that treasure chest is doing it so there was a reason forest fen put that blaze in there there was a reason the forest fen referenced the blaze because he know and there's another reason i'm convinced this is a real thing is because when you look at it realistically, I never would have thought of that. See, if I had been hiding a treasure, I would just say, okay, I'm going to put the treasure over here. I'm going to put it under this uh, old fallen tree, for instance. And, you know, I'll give some clues. But I don't know if it would have occurred to me like it occurred to Fenn to say, and oh, by the way, there will be like a warning, as it were. There will be some sort of signal, as it were, to show you you found it. But realistically, you almost have to. For those of us who have been boots on the ground, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You almost have to have something out there alerting you to the fact that you are there. And that's the blaze. And of course, what is probably the most ephemeral, in the air kind of thing that we can think of when we're thinking about this hunt, not to mention all of it. <laughs> It, and I'm laughing because I'm thinking of my last video where I was talking about how all these different things Fenn says are so confusing and contradictory and <sighs> clues and hints and, you know, you're just like, they're all kind of mixed up and one day they're one thing and one day they're another thing. I mean, by and large, I think we could say most of them stick if you have a perception of something from the clues and the hints well the hints to me are just way out there but uh, the poem the poem the, to me is just the most is a batch of clues still is extremely as we all know puzzling having said that Assume you've gotten to any place. Wow. Okay. So, we're extremely reliant on the blaze. We're extremely reliant. I mean, if you can, in fact, see the blaze from Google Earth or from just Google Maps uh, satellite view, that would be wonderful. I would hope it would be true. Um, the problem with that is, is what I found out when I was at Dinosaur National Monument. If you can see the blaze from Google Maps, you're looking at something pretty big. Oh boy, see what I mean? I've been caught. Hey Tober, what's up buddy? How are ya? Heard me talking and you woke up under your canopy bed, huh? Tober's favorite bed is he's got, I've got an end table and it kind of comes down all around the top of it. It's fairly low to the ground being an end table. It's at the end of a couch. And then I put a cushion under it. Man, he goes in there, it's like a canopy bed, you know? And he's kind of, it's kind of secluded because he's under it and he's on this kind of fluffy cushion. 
Man, he loves that canopy bed. I call it a canopy bed. All right, buddy, I'm busy here. Don't start knocking crap around, will you? Please. Your art, now you're headbutting the camera. All right, try to be good. Oh, yeah, there we go. Try to be good, buddy. Cool. Okay, back to the point. If you're looking at the blaze from a map, a satellite map or Google Earth, it's big. Now, the technology has gotten a lot better. And that's why I say sometimes when I look at quotes from Fenn, especially if they're technology-based quotes or about technology, again, as I'm apologizing if the, if the camera is knocking back and forth because uh, Tober's here. He likes to, you know, being a cat, he likes to headbutt uh, whatever I'm interested in. So, the thing is, If you can see it from Google Earth or from a map, then it's pretty big blaze. And as I've learned, especially in places like Dinosaur National Monument, I had that blaze that, that I showed that you can see from Google Maps. I thought it was such a beautiful blaze. I thought it was so cool, that eagle kind of looking down from the cliff top and then the wings outstretch. I'm sure a lot of it was my imagination. I asked one person I got to talking about it with, and they said, um, I said, yeah, but just tell me this, did it look at all like an eagle, like I thought? He said, yeah, he said, I saw that part of it. He said, but you can't see the blaze from Google Earth. I'm not sure it even was Google Earth. It may have been Google Map. But the point is, you can't see it from a satellite picture. And I thought, uh, well, there you go. So he just completely dismissed it. Like, So that's a big deal when Fenn makes these pronouncements, right? So it means to me that... I don't know what it means to me. Does it mean you can't see the blaze from a satellite map or a satellite cam? A lot of people say absolutely it's something on the... Oh, but, but let me get to my point about that. Even if you could see the blaze from a satellite cam, it's going to be big. And what I learned at Dinosaur National Monument was I had this blaze that I thought was so... Whoa! <laughs> Thank you. That really helped. <sighs> yeah, headbutt the camera now. Start headbutting me. That really helps. Thank you, Tober. All right, be a good cat. Be a good... Ooh, that was like a, it was like a body slam to my stomach. Here's the thing, folks. If in fact. You can see it. When I went to Dinosaur National Monument, when I went to Dinosaur National Monument, I had this beautiful eagle head and wings that I saw looking down from a cliff top that looked down to the side of the river, and below it was this little patch of ground with what looked like bushes or maybe scrub trees, maybe small pine trees. And I actually went down and I looked at the area from uh, man on the ground camera shots that people had done where they had kayaked down the river and photographed it. I literally went out there, you know, flew out to Dinosaur National Monument with the concept that if I went below this eagle thing, you know, see it if you want, it's on my video, probably, I think it's just Dinosaur National Monument. I literally believed that I was going to go across the river in the cold and I was going to get into this thing that was right underneath this eagle head and these wings that were kind of stuck out, almost like a, a mother eagle looking down on her nest. And I was going to find this treasure chest. Well, hell, I got out there. It's just so big. And you realize that if you can see something from a satellite camera, even though they've gotten very sophisticated, that you're, it's going to, it, the, the land, the area that you're going to be searching in is going to be very big. It almost makes it pointless to even have the blaze. It's kind of like saying, yeah, at the base of the mountain, you can find this little 10 by 10 by 6 or 5 inch treasure chest. So, yeah, it's, gee, thanks for the blaze, but still, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to look two, three, four, five acres of land to find this little 
double shoe box. Very unrealistic concept. I don't think Forrest Fenn would do that. For that reason, I truly believe the blaze now is something you have to see on the ground. And believe me when I say that, I go, unfortunately. On the other hand, and I say unfortunately because I don't want to have all my TEM going out there put me in a situation where I'm literally relying on seeing something on the ground when I'm out there. That time, effort, money is fine, but it's, I mean, it's something you want to do. I, I've called, told people before I think of this as a hobby. I mean, if I want to go on a trip, I might as well go on a trip where I can make some money and also be part of this kind of the fun puzzle, which is the way I look at it. 